This is a sequel. Um, it is a sequel, but it also has a kind of rebooting quality about it of uh, Blair Witch Project. Uh, 1994... Originally, uh, Heather and two colleagues went off into the Black Hills, disappeared. A year later, their footage was found, turned into the Blair Witch Project, which is this no-budget uh, movie which effectively jump-starts the whole found footage uh, thing which booms throughout horror in the early 21st century. Now, 20 years later in terms of the time frame, but actually 17 years later in terms of actual real life, uh, her brother James wants to go in search of his sister. He has been encouraged to think that she may still be alive because there's a bit of footage which is found by some Blair Witch obsessives who post online as Darknet 666, which has a fragmentary image which he thinks is uh, his sister or maybe his sister. So pretty much rerun of the first setup, gathers around him other filmmakers, including a student filmmaker, and sets out back into the woods making a documentary as they go. When James was four years old, his older sister disappeared while making a documentary near the town of Burkittsville, Maryland. Some of the footage shot by James's sister was later found. The final moments of it showed her going into a house, seemingly within the Black Hills forest. <laughs> that area was extensively searched by police and FBI, but they could find no evidence of an existing house in those woods. Investigators concluded that James's sister might have vanished elsewhere, despite her crew's equipment and footage being found nearby. For as long as I've been friends with James, he's wondered what happened to her. His continued search to find closure and answers to his sister's disappearance is a subject of this documentary. So there we go, set up in a nutshell. This time there are more people, they have more cameras, they have handy headset cameras, which kind of to some extent explain the way they just keep filming uh, motif, which other found footage films have found hard to keep alive. They have uh, GPS and cell phone. They also have a drone that can give them, actually they will say oh, for cheap aerial shots, but gives them master shots. So you have a lot more characters, a lot more footage. And uh, what follows, as I said, is a sequel, but it also has a, a rebooting uh, feel to it in which the images are crisper and clearer than before the setup is very, very similar. Although this time you have so many angles that in fact, the way in which it cuts between shots, it sometimes ceases to feel almost like a found footage movie. It just looks like a kind of post-ER, shaky cam, but crystal clear images film. Um, it's made by the writer-director team of Simon Barrett and Adam Wingard, who made um, Your Next and The Guest, and are very uh, genre literate. And again, the gag is that as night falls, time and space seem to circle amongst themselves, a circle in on themselves, the group bicker and fracture. And then the main setup is that each one appears to be occupying a, or experiencing space and time in a different way. The problems are that to some extent, you know, we've all seen this kind of found footage thing so often that one wonders entirely what the point of it is, particularly when it's starting to look so much like conventional drama. The second thing is in the first film, the, the cast who were, you know, newcomers were genuinely terrified. What Merrick and Sanchez did was gave them coordinates, GPS coordinates, and then Merrick and Sanchez would go on ahead, set up things in the woods that the cast would then stumble upon. I mean, it was all organised and orchestrated, but they were genuinely scared. You have a more professional cast to some extent here, although it does seem to me that what they're doing is much more acting. There is also a greater reliance on jump scares, which is something which was notably lacking from the original. And we now live in an age in which, because you have you know great big sound design as absolutely standard, and the sound design really is this one of the standouts in the film. It, you do get these quite quite bang, quite quite bang scares, which don't work for me. Although they, there's no question that they seem to work for a multiplex uh, audience. On the plus side, there is a sort of Shirley Jackson-like elegance to the way in which the thing cycles back in on itself. It's clearly made by people who respect and admire the original, although in, to, for my money they don't capture that the, the sense of terror that the original had. I mean, I think people do forget or aren't aware because they weren't there the first time around just how scary the original film was. And I, this isn't just me saying this. I remember I made a little documentary, which is probably still online for Channel 4, which included a fairly you know well-known then uh, film journalist being absolutely traumatised by the film. And uh, Adam and Joe talking about how much it had just scared them in the way nothing else had. Well, that moment has now passed. And now what you have is, OK, it's not that, it's something else. 
does it work? And the, the answer is it's 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 OK. It's efficient. I'm sure that it will you know please a multiplex crowd. It brings nothing new to the table, particularly. It does feel like retreading old ground. That is partly a function of age. It it does feel it has lost the sense of reality that the original one had, but it could have been much worse. I mean, there's no question that you can see in every frame that it's made by people who are trying to reinvent the original in an interesting way. So not a failure, not in any way anything that moves things forward or surprised. There was definitely, I mean, more than one journalist has used the phrase, if you go down in the woods today, you won't be in for a surprise. But that accepted, I think it does have an efficiency about it, which means that it's nothing like, and certainly when you compare it to the to the, the sequel, which came out immediately after Blair Witch, um, it's, it, it's, it's in a different league. So... It's fine. What was the phrase you used about Bridget Jones? You said funny, funny enough. enough. It's okay.